Today's video is a highly requested one. I have been getting a lot of people asking me because they've seen that I've purchased a couple more expensive or higher end fragrances. They've been asking me, okay, but are those ones worth it? If you could only choose one, which one would it be? Which was your best niche investment? Which one gives you the best value for your dollar? So today I thought it would be fun to go through and rank all of my higher end niche fragrances in order from best to worst. And I'm taking into account the scent profile, how unique they are, how long lasting they are, how much did they cost, the packaging, all of that stuff. So I'm going to be sharing all of my thoughts with you today on these 18 fragrances ranked from my least favorite to my most favorite and I hope that you really enjoy. If this is your first time here, hello and thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail. My name is Alithia and on this channel we talk mostly about perfume. so if that is your thing definitely make sure to head on down and hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in my number 18 spot, which is the lowest spot on my list, this is probably my least favorite niche fragrance. And this is one that I'm actually on the fence about. This is Killian Love Don't Be Shy. And the reason that this one falls so low on my list, even though I really like the way it smells, I do like the note profile in theory for the most part. It's a very sweet, sugary, caramelly, orange blossom fragrance, very, very gourmand, very bubblegummy sweet. Um, it actually smells like those orange bubblegums that have the comics in them to me. So the reason that this is so low on my list is because I think when I first smelt it, I was kind of blown away by how sweet it was. I had never smelt anything quite like this before. So I did really like it initially, and I also do really like the packaging, but it's almost too sweet. It's almost over the top sweet and it is not one of my most enjoyable fragrances to wear. As you can see, I have put a little bit of a dent in it because I've been trying to wear it. I have given this one a fair chance. I've worn this one at least five or six times, maybe more. Um, and during the appropriate weather and stuff like that. And I have to say that it's just not one of my favorite fragrances. For the price, for the amount that I paid, over $300, I honestly think my favorite part about this fragrance is the packaging, but above and beyond that, I can't say that I absolutely love this. And I've also heard that the previous formulation of this fragrance was much better and that they've reformulated it since then and it's no longer as bold and it's no longer as a wow factor as it used to be. Um, so yeah, I don't think that this is 100% worth the hype and I certainly would not purchase it again and I wouldn't pay that much money for it. Um, in fact, I just don't even love the way it smells in general. So yeah, this one is definitely the lowest on my list of all my niche fragrances and don't be surprised if you see me sell this one. In my number 17 spot, we have Roses Fini from Mansara. So this one, you guys, I have raved about this one for so long and so many times. I love the way that this smells. This is a beautiful syrupy rose vanilla fragrance. Um, it's very sugary sweet. It's very bold. It's very strong in projection and performance and longevity. I really, really like the way this smells. The reason this is so low on my list is because I, again, I don't find it super wearable. I do like the way this smells though. I like the way this smells better than Love by Killian, for example, but um, because it is so intoxicating and so heavy and so strong, I don't find it to be as wearable as some of my other ones, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. I do enjoy wearing it. I just have to have a very light hand with it, um, but it is certainly one of my lesser worn fragrances. Yeah, so I think that's why it's lower on my list. It's one of those ones that I just don't really reach for and the time that I did wear it, the very first time I did wear it, I got a really bad headache because it was so strong. So it's just one of those fragrances I have to take with a lighter hand. So that is number 17, love it, but don't find it super, super wearable. Okay, number 16. Now keep in mind, you guys, as we go up this list, all of the other fragrances that are on this list are ones I actually really, really like. So not to say that any of these are bad and any of these are good. They're all really, really good. They just I had to rank them, right? So this is Killian Princess. This is a marshmallowy, fluffy, feminine fragrance. I really like it, but it is not one of my absolute favorite scents. I really like it though. I find it wearable. I find it very pretty. I find it very cozy and comforting, and it is kind of an easy grab and go, especially for those cold days if I don't know what to wear. Um, so I do really like it, but I just, looking at the ones I have in front of me on my right side, I know that I have others that I do like more than this one. Number 15 is one from Kaali, and technically Kaali is a niche 
brand. So this is Kaylee Citrus. Now I love this one, you guys. I've told you guys I love this one. This is one of my favorite um, beautiful citrusy smells for summer. It is a, I think there's actually rhubarb in here too. And there's, um, I could be wrong about the rhubarb actually, but there's grapefruit, there's musk, there's rose. This just is a beautiful, like sparkling, sophisticated scent for the summer. There's also oak moss. So it's like a little bit earthy. It's kind of along the same lines as Chloe Nomad. The reason this falls low on my list is because of the performance. So dollar for value, not really great. I love the way it smells, but it does only last for about three hours, um, maybe four if you're lucky. And I do find that it's one that you do have to reapply. Um, it definitely does not give me the lasting power that I want for the price that I paid, especially being an eau de parfum. This is not an eau de toilette fragrance, so I would rather it performed like an eau de parfum, but it is composed mostly of those brighter citrusy notes and a lot of like lighter notes that just dissipate faster. So I think just by virtue of the fact that it is a citrus scent, it's not very long lasting. So that is in my number 15 spot. Number 14 spot we have from Maison Margiela, the replica line, we have Jazz Club. So you guys, you know how much I love this one. You know how much I love this. <laughs> so for this to be number 14, that tells you how many amazing fragrances I have on this list, in my personal opinion, of course. So this is a delicious, boozy, vanilla, tobacco, nighttime, woody, sexy. Oh, it's just so good, you guys, it's so good. Mm, I love it so much. The reason that this falls a little bit lower on my list as opposed to higher on my list is because it is a touch masculine and it might not be super wearable for all of my occasions. Of course, I haven't had any chances to wear this because I have not dressed up and gone out to any of those kind of atmospheres that I think this is appropriate for. I don't often go out to bars or clubs or lounges to begin with. Um, and this isn't my idea of like cozy nighttime at home. It's not really my idea of a fall winter daytime. I feel like this is putting on a dress and some heels and going out, you know, and maybe not every time either. So that's the reason I put it lower on my list because I do find that it's one that I will probably reach for a lot less than some of my other ones. And something that gives a fragrance a lot of value for me is how often I'm going to wear it. So that's why this one falls a little bit lower, but it also doesn't have the best lasting power. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not the best. I've certainly smelled some replica fragrances that lasted poorer. Um, but yeah, so those would be the reasons that it falls a little bit lower, mostly the performance and the wearability. Number 13 spot, we have Maison Francis Kirk John Gentle Fluidity Gold. So this is one that actually does give you quite amazing value for your dollar. This has really, really good performance. It's a very unique scent. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's very concentrated, a little bit goes a long way. And it's certainly not the most expensive niche fragrance out there. There are much more expensive higher end fragrances out there, but this one I think gives you a really good bang for your buck because you really don't need very much of it. The reason it falls a little bit lower on my list is purely for the scent factor. I really like the way it smells, but I have other fragrances that I like the way they smell even more, a lot more than this one. So this is like a beautiful, kind of a spicy nighttime vanilla fragrance. And I would wear this one for special occasions when I really wanted that bougie effect. And I feel like you'd have to have some sort of a luxurious fabric. I don't think this is the type of fragrance I would wear to go to the post office or to get groceries or anything like that. This is definitely um, going out for dinner or something like that. So not super wearable all the time. Um, and also I just have other fragrances that I prefer the scent profile. So that's why this one is a little bit lower on my list. In my number 12 spot, we have one from Nishan A and this is 100 Silent Ways. I love this fragrance, you guys. This is a beautiful fruity floral with a very strong vanilla undertone. So for a fruity floral um, vanilla fragrance, this actually has a lot of depth. Of course, it is an extra de parfum. It's very strong. It's not as long lasting as some of the other Nishan A fragrances, but it still does have pretty good lasting power and I really really like it I find it to be very pretty very feminine um, it's got just the right mix of wearability and also with that uniqueness factor and that depth to it so um, this is one that I would wear for like summertime night 
or even wintertime day or fall day, I think you could get away with this. But it's a beautiful, very feminine, pretty fragrance, which is kind of where I feel myself going in the future is I wanna wear a lot more feminine fragrances, really classy fragrances, and a little bit less toward the like unisex masculinity side, just because I feel better when I wear those fragrances. In my number 11 spot, we have another really sweet fragrance. This is Exi Dolo Love and Crime. So this one has some similarities to Love by Killian. This one is also a very sweet gourmand fragrance. This also has sugar in it, the way Love by Killian does. This one I think has some cacao in there. It's a very sweet gourmandy fragrance. There is some orange in the opening, actually quite a bit of orange. And to the point that when I first spray it, I think it's gonna to be too much orange. That's how much orange is in the opening of this. But that orange really starts to blend and kind of blur a little bit over time. And then what you're left with is just this beautiful, sweet, vanilla-y gourmand fragrance, and I love it. It's very addictive to me. Um, this was one that was pretty much love at first sniff. I caught it on the air and I smelt it on my skin out of a little tiny sample and I just applied the tiniest amount and it was so bold and so intoxicating and I just loved it. So this is a great dollar for value fragrance. You do get um, quite a lot of punch and a, and a very good performance in a small amount. So this little 30 mil retails for about 160 Canadian, but that's actually pretty good because you really don't need very much. Um, so something compared to something like Kaali Citrus, this is much, much better. And yeah, I really love this one. So this one I haven't worn a whole lot lately um but that's i think that's just because i have so many fragrances but i do really really like this one so that is exidolo love and crime and getting into our top 10 my top 10 favorite niche fragrances we have rolling in love by killian so this one again is a powdery almondy fragrance it's got some iris um it smells a little bit lipsticky it definitely has a bit of that lipsticky vibe which i really like it's very deep it's very rich um, intoxicating it smells dark to me it actually smells exactly like the bottle looks it smells like a deep rich dark red lipstick is what it smells like to me with a little bit of almond and a little bit of a powdery touch so very sexy very good for date nights very sensual I really like it it's exactly the type of note profile that I really like in a fragrance so also has very good performance I don't know how long lasting really it is because I've never worn it for a daytime fragrance for me this is a nighttime fragrance if I put this on at dinner time and it lasts me until bedtime I'm happy with that um, but it does have pretty good projection and it does smell very dense and very thick so this is in my number 10 spot in my number nine spot we have Montal chocolate greedy so this is currently my only Montal fragrance that I have in my collection and I really really like this one the reason this one is higher up on my list is simply because I find it really enjoyable to wear it's very long-lasting and I really just like wearing it I really like um, the scent bubble that I get from it you know when you're walking around throughout the day and you flip your hair or something and you get a whiff of your perfume this has the nicest the nicest little scent bubble like I just love catching a whiff of this on myself as I'm moving about throughout the throughout the day and this is one that really surprised me because it's very chocolatey very powdery really has like an actual gourmand chocolatey vibe about it kind of like chocolate powder chocolate biscuits chocolate something like it's a powdery soft delicious chocolatey smell and um I didn't think I was going to like it when I first got it and it turns out it's one of the ones I enjoy the most when I wear it so that's why this one is so high up on the list and I think dollar for value I think this is great because it does last a really long time it's fairly affordable and it smells delicious and yeah can't go wrong so that is Montal chocolate greedy okay and my number eight spot is Kaali vanilla so the reason this one is so high up on the list and beats out some pretty incredible fragrances the reason for me that I have this so high up on my list is because I love the way this smells. I love the way it smells and I find it to be such an easy grab and go fragrance. So I get a lot of use out of this one. I get more use out of this one than I will from my Gentle Fluidity Gold. I get more use out of it than I certainly than my Mansara Roses Vini. I just find this one to be so so valuable to me because it's one I love to wear and I wear it all the time so that for me gives it a lot of value it also has pretty good lasting power it's not the best it's not the boldest but it's not bad either I would say it's about average 
and I know that it projects and I know that people can smell it on me hours after applying it because I get compliments on it. Um, and I can smell this on myself as well. If I spray it, especially on clothing, it will last me on my clothing all throughout the night and into the next day. I can still smell it when I go to do laundry or pick my sweater up off the floor or whatever the case is, I can smell this. So I think the performance is pretty good. It's not horribly expensive. Um, this definitely has better performance than the Cali Citrus. And I just love this. It's such it's such a perfect vanilla. It's just your quintessential brown sugar vanilla fragrance and I love it. So that for me gives this one a lot of value. It's why it's why it's one of my favorite fragrances in my collection. So that is my Kiali vanilla. In my number seven spot, we have Van Cleef & Arpels Orchidée Vanille. So this one, you, you guys are probably seeing a theme. Obviously, I love my vanilla fragrances. Um, so this is a beautiful, sweet, cozy vanilla fragrance. It's got a little bit of an orangey touch to it. It has a little bit of a chocolatiness to it. It's very cozy and inviting and comforting. It's a beautiful fragrance for fall and winter. I love this. And again, the reason that this is higher up on my list is because not only do I love the way it smells, but I also find it to be very wearable. It's one that I can easily grab and throw on, especially for the winter and the fall. And I don't even have to think twice about it. I know that I'm going to enjoy it and I know that I feel good in it. And as you can see, I have gotten a little bit of use. I'm finally putting some dints in my perfumes here, which makes me very happy because <laughs> I've bought so many of them in the last year. Um, so yeah, this is one I've worn quite a few times. And the other thing I have to say, a lot of people complain about the longevity of the Van Cleef & Arpels fragrances. I don't have an issue with longevity with this at all. Um, but when I wear my perfumes, you guys, I spray them a little on my skin and also a little bit on my clothing. So anytime you put it on your clothing, it's going to have a longer lasting effect. So and I, I like to spray this on a sweater. I love spraying this on like my winter jacket or a sweater because it just makes my clothing smell so good and it makes it smell so cozy and delicious. And if you go hug somebody and they put their nose in your shirt, it just smells the best, you know? So I would say this lasts longer than the Kiali vanilla for sure. And it's got a pretty good presence and I really like it. So it's also not one of the most crazy expensive fragrances out there. So I think that for your dollar and your value, I think this is pretty good as well. In my number six spot, we have Maison Francis Kirkjohn Baccarat Rouge 540. So this one is one that I don't actually get much of an opportunity to wear, but that being said, it would be a very wearable fragrance. The only reason I haven't worn this one yet is completely me having a weird complex and me um, wanting to save it because this was the first really high-end expensive perfume I purchased. Well, actually maybe my second, but this one was up there for me and I don't want this to have memories of cleaning my house and being at home on lockdown and all of that stuff. I really want this perfume to at least have some sort of a fancy-ish memory associated to it. So that's why I haven't worn it. But that being said, this is a beautiful, sweet, feminine fragrance that would make a great signature scent. And if you wanted to wear it every day, you could wear it every day. If you wanted to save it for a special occasion, you could save it for a special occasion. So the reason this is... Um, higher up on my list, even though I don't wear it, is because I do really love the fragrance and it does have excellent performance. So I know that I've said I become quite anosmic to this one and I still do feel like sometimes it's easy to become anosmic to it, but I'm also learning better ways to wear my perfume and I'm learning little tips and tricks as to how to notice my perfume more throughout the day. One of those is don't spray it super close to your face. Spray it a little further away, like on your wrists. And then as you're moving about through the day, you kind of get that waft as opposed to it always being like right up by your nose, in which case you are gonna become a little more nose blind to it. But anyways, this type of perfume, this actually lasts a really long time on clothing. Even though it's quite expensive, I think that because it smells so incredible and it's so well liked, most people like it, and it does have really good um, performance. I think that, again, for your value, I think it's a very high value fragrance. In my number five spot, we have Greenwich Village from Bond number no. nine, New York. So this is a newer fragrance to my collection and this has, I might be a little bit biased right now because this is brand new. So I'm probably kind of in love with it because it's brand new too. But this is such a beautiful fragrance, you guys. This is a very unique, complex, fresh, floral, 
even like with a touch of gourmand fragrance. It's one of those fragrances that much like Baccarat Rouge 540 doesn't really fit into a category. It's got praline, it's got ambroxan, it's got floral notes, it's got lychee. It's a very unique, um, multifaceted, beautiful fragrance that is so well blended that when you smell it, it's hard to tell what you're smelling. You just know it smells good. It, yeah, it's it's just a very pretty, sweet, bright, happy, posh fragrance. I would say that this definitely is feminine. I think they market it unisex. I'm not 100% sure. And of course, anybody could wear it, but I do think that this one leans feminine. And the reason I think it's such good value and such a high value fragrance is because it does have pretty good longevity. It's very unique. It's very well blended. It's a beautiful fragrance. Yeah, I just think the composition and I think the way they've blended the notes together makes it very special. And also the packaging is super high quality. So this is a 100 ml bottle and this is quite an expensive fragrance, but considering this is a 100 ml bottle, it's really not that much more expensive than say a 50 ml that you pay half price for. I think we just think it's expensive because they sell them in 100 mils. And so if you were to look at a 50 mil of this, you'd be paying about $250, um, which is still pricey, but not a lot worse than Baccarat Rouge, for instance. So yeah, I love this. Um, it's kind of one of my new obsessions. It's beautiful. And I do think it's pretty good value for your dollar as well. In my number four spot, we have Byredo Bal de Freak. So this one is one that I actually haven't had a chance to wear a whole lot because it's not really appropriate for this time of year. This is another beautiful, interesting, sort of a fresh, woody, floral fragrance for summertime. I think this would make, again, a great signature scent. It's a very easy to wear, grab and go every single day type of fragrance. It's a beautiful fragrance and it smells luxe. It smells expensive. So I really like it. So this is one that, even though I haven't really had a chance to wear it, I think this is going to be a staple for me for the summertime. This is one I could see myself throwing on every single day in the summer. I have a lot of those fragrances, but this is one I could definitely see myself getting a lot of use out of, which also increases the value for me. So. Also, the packaging is great. Um, it's beautiful, it's simple, it's minimalistic, and it does have um, a really nice magnetized cap, and it also has the little B on the top. So I think packaging and presentation um, gives it a little bit more value as well. In my number three spot, we have another Bond 9 fragrance. So again, this one, I could be a little biased because I just got it, but you guys, this is one of those fragrances that kind of blows your mind a little bit. Like it is so beautiful and unique. And again, it's very well blended. It's, this one smells very bright and sweet and feminine. And I don't know, to me, I just think again, this is one that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. I think that the note composition that they have listed, the way they have it blended is so perfect. It just creates this entirely new thing that again, doesn't really have a category. It's a little bit gourmand, it's a little bit woody, it's got ambroxan in it as well. It has kind of that same sparkling quality that um, Baccarat Rouge has. In fact, a lot of people compare this to Baccarat Rouge. And in the opening, it does smell somewhat similar to Baccarat Rouge, but that only lasts for a couple of minutes. And then that starts to kind of break apart. And the longer this sits on the skin and dries down, the more it becomes its own very unique fragrance. It ends up being a little bit chocolatey, a little bit nutty, a little bit woody, um, still very sweet. Again, this smells very luxe. It smells very expensive. It smells very posh. Um, I think you could wear this day or night all year round and I love it. It's beautiful. Definitely unisex. This is a little bit more unisex than the Greenwich Village, um, but I think it does lean a touch more feminine and I love it. Again, you can't fault the packaging. Um, it has excellent longevity. So yeah, this one's just high up on my list. I I love the way it smells. I love the performance. I love the package. I love everything about it. So one of the one of the highest quality fragrances I have for sure. So in my number two spot, I have Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin. So I did realize after the fact that this is not really a niche fragrance, but because this is a higher end expensive fragrance, and I think it's a little bit more exclusive because not everybody has it, and it's not quite as easy to find. You do have to order it online or you have to go into one of the higher end retail stores. Um, so I do consider this a little bit more of an exclusive close to niche fragrance. Let me know how you feel about that. But um, I, I didn't even think twice before grabbing this because to me, this is such 
an extravagant, just very posh, expensive, exorbitant fragrance. So I didn't even think twice. Um, but for me, this one is definitely high up on my list in terms of my more expensive higher end fragrances. So this one again is not a cheap fragrance, but everything about this fragrance screams luxury and exorbitance. Um, so starting with the bottle, the bottle is so intricate and such an incredible design. It's very heavy, it's very heavy duty, and it has a beautiful fragrance as well. So this is a cardamom, iris, and vanilla fragrance. It's got a bit of a woodiness to it. It's a little bit powdery. It's a little bit lipsticky. It's got quite a good dose of vanilla. It's very feminine, very sultry, very sexy, very unique. I love the way this smells, you guys. I told you guys if you watched my perfume, um, my new perfume collection video, the second I'm allowed to dress up and wear high heels, this is the one I'm picking. The second I get to dress up and go out, you guys, this is gonna be my luxe fragrance of choice. Um, I love seeing this sitting on my tray. This, to me, was worth every penny. It has monster longevity. It has really good projection. Um, and of course, you just, you just get such high value with this fragrance. This is in my number two spot. I'm sorry that it's not really, really a niche fragrance, but I hope you will forgive me for that. So this is Luby Rouge. And in my number one spot, we have from Parfum de Marly, Delina Exclusive. So if you guys watch my channel, you probably guessed all along that this would at least be in the top five. This is hands down, without a doubt, my favorite, favorite niche fragrance. Um, and this one I think is also excellent value for your money. So this is a beautiful, vanilla rose fragrance. It's got woody notes in it. I think there's still some lychee in the opening. It's a little bit sweet, but it's very deep and very sultry and very, very feminine, very pretty, very luxe, very beautiful. It's just a beautiful fragrance. It makes me feel incredible when I wear it. It's such a pretty fragrance. Unfortunately, I haven't gone anywhere really in the last 12 months where I could wear this, where it felt like it suited the occasion. I have tried to wear it to the gym. I have tried to wear it for like running errands sometimes. It just doesn't fit. I mean, you could do it, but it just doesn't fit. This is, it's such a beautiful, classy, elegant fragrance. And this has excellent longevity, excellent performance. You can smell it. You get compliments on this one. One or two sprays is all you need and it lasts you. You also have, again, the heavy duty weighted cap with the little crystal on the top. Is it magnetized? I can't remember, no. It's not magnetized, but it's got a pretty good grip there. And you've also got the beautiful detail of the tassels. I mean, everything about this bottle, everything about this perfume is just a 10 out of 10 for me. I love the color, I love I love the way it looks, I love the prestige, um, it's just gorgeous. So what else can I say? So this is my favorite niche fragrance and I think this is also excellent value for your money. I think if you were to purchase this, assuming you liked the fragrance, you would not be disappointed in the quality and you would not be disappointed in the longevity. It's a great fragrance. So yeah, that is my number one pick. So that was it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts. I would really like to know down below if we share any similar thoughts or would you have ranked something higher or lower? And I'm especially curious to know what your thoughts are on Love by Killian because I think that's kind of a hot topic these days. I think people have kind of like pulled the curtain back and seen Love by Killian uh, for what it really is. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you feel like it, head on over and follow me on Instagram and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye for now.